Hello, everyone. I'm really excited to have you here. We are going to be talking about the miracle nerve, the vagus or bundle of nerves, the vagus nerve. And I am obsessed by this nerve. And so uh, we're here with a guest who is going to be speaking at the conference um, and is going to be talking about this nerve. And then we'll hear a little bit about it about 15 minutes before uh, on this call. So Bashar Badran is our guest and um, he's going to walk us through what this nerve is, why it's important, and a little bit about what he'll be talking about at the conference. Great. Well, uh, thanks for having me, Nicole. It's really, uh, I think this conference is going to be a lot of fun. And um, we'll try to do our best here to cover everything about the vagus in 15 minutes, although it's kind of difficult. Uh, but we'll start from the beginning. So what is the vagus nerve? Uh, the vagus nerve is a large bundle of nerves. It contains about 100,000 individual nerves, um, which creates a nerve tract. It's really this kind of bundle. It's about the size of like a small OK sign. And it runs from your brain and targets every uh, internal bodily organ that you have. So it, it's a connector between your brain and all of these organs, including your heart, your lungs, your spleen, your kidney, your bladder, your intestines, your, reprodu your reproductive organs. And so it's a really intricate superhighway for your body to communicate what's going on real time with your brain. So if you're full, um, your stomach sends a signal up through the vagus to your brain, which uh, then realizes it's full. That's one of the uh, most commonly known uh, vagal mediated mechanisms. But uh, the primary uh, use of the vagus is for your brain to send a parasympathetic slowing signal to your organs. So when you're resting and your heart rate wants to relax, uh, the vagus nerve is responsible for sending that signal from your brain to your heart via these cholinergic synapses and it slows your resting heart rate. It slows respiration. It allows for digestion. Um, and so it's really this key uh, bi-directional communicator um, that's integral to day-to-day -day, uh, living. The, um, could you speak a little bit about, you mentioned a little bit about how the nerve also lets people know to, or lets people's bodies know to slow their heart rate and things like that. As you know, with the transformative technology community, we're focused on mental health, emotional well-being, human thriving, sort of the positive development of the human psychological state. How can we use the vagus nerve for that? What are some of the ways that, that stimulating the vagus nerve can help us with our minds? It's a great question. So uh, your body has the autonomic nervous system, also most commonly known as fight or flight, right? Um, and so there's the uh, parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system. Sympathetic is involved in kind of elevating heart rate, increasing uh, your ability to get ready to fight. And uh, parasympathetic is like a parachute. So it's the slowing um, of all of these biological functions when you're in a relaxed state. Uh, the vagus nerve, especially in a lot of the research that we've been doing, um, when you activate it, can actually induce a small... Uh, decrease in heart rate. It induces this kind of vagal mediated relaxation response um, that people are really interested in and are exploring right now in the research space. Uh, it also the long term stimulation of the vagus nerve increases heart rate variability, which is associated with all of these really positive health and well being markers. So the vagus nerve is really this key uh, cardiovascular uh, mechanism that you can push and pull. Uh, depending on the outcomes that you want. Sometimes you want a more of a heavy vagal mediated tone. Sometimes if you're playing a sport, you don't want to have like a really high uh, vagal tone. You want to be up and ready and active. Um, so it's really a co contextually dependent nerve that can be uh, pushed and pulled both ways. Mm. Well, uh, that actually raises, um, I would love to hear a little bit about some of the research that you're doing right now that you're the most excited about with the vagus nerve. Of course. So uh, vagus nerve uh, stimulation was invented in the 1980s by a friend of mine, uh, Jake Zubara out of Philadelphia. They ended up actually uh, creating a company known as Cyberonics. Uh, Cyberonics was just recently acquired by Livanova, um, and they commercialized the first ever uh, neuromodulation therapy for epilepsy and treatment of refractory depression. That involves uh, implanting uh, a electrode sheath that surrounds the vagus nerve implanted in your neck and a pulse generator implanted underneath your clavicle. So essentially it's this implantable neuromodulatory technique that delivers electricity directly to the vagus nerve 
and over time uh, treats epilepsy and depression. Um, but there's problems with that, right? One, it's expensive. Two, uh, it requires a surgery. It really to translate and create new paradigms uh, because of one and two, right? So we can't just say, oh, we'd like to explore this uh, behavioral intervention with VNS because we're going to need six months of planning, a neurosurgical operation, and all of that stuff. So in the last five years or so, we've been developing non-invasive VNS. A non-invasive VNS uh, targets the vagus nerve um, in a different mechanism. So the vagus nerve, even though it does run throughout your entire body, uh, there's branches of the nerve known as the auricular branch of the vagus nerve that innervate your ears, your left and right ears. We use that, uh, that target as an entry point into the vagal system by stimulating the ear to mimic the effects of cervically implanted VNS. So uh, pretty much, yeah, it's amazing. We've been developing it at the Medical University of South Carolina in conjunction with the City College of New York, uh, where we do a lot of these studies. And at first, they started off as safety, tolerability, feasibility studies, uh, which were all positive and published in brain simulation. The follow-up studies were then, uh, does this actually activate the vagal system, right? Perhaps the, the small bundles don't really go into the main bundle of vagus nerve. So we ran a series of experiments testing uh, if you can modulate heart rate, heart rate variability, respiration rate. And we even ran um, studies where we put non-invasive VNS um, and stimulated individuals in an fMRI scanner to look at the upstream direct brain effects. Mm. All of those studies mimicked cervical uh, VNS, implantable. So we felt pretty confident that we've developed this system with parameters that target the vagal afferent and efferent systems. Now uh, we're going to phase zero of clinical trials um, in kind of two arms. The first one, the one that I'm really most passionate about is using VNS as a therapeutic. So we pair non-invasive VNS with a rehabilitation training to help babies that are born premature uh, learn how to feed. So uh, we see a lot of uh, preterm babies that are born with uh, some sort of uh, brain injury, uh, either in the womb or as they come out, and they don't know how to feed or suck on a bottle. So an occupational therapist has to train them for six weeks or so. They stay in the hospital, it's expensive, it's really taxing on the family. There's yeah. really no good intervention. So what we're doing is pairing stimulation with uh, this bottle sucking paradigm to rapidly accelerate and enhance the outcomes. That seems to work in the first eight babies. That's really some of the most exciting stuff um, that we're doing. We're also doing uh, things in the cognitive enhancement and meditation space where uh, perhaps there's an afferent projection to the cortex in which you can increase attention and concentration and memory. So we're doing this a various cognitive enhancement studies and we're also exploring its use in meditation. So we already do e-meditation uh, with TDCS, which is transcranial direct current stimulation. But if we can access um, the vagus nerve through the ear, it makes a pretty right target to enhance and accelerate meditative states. Wow. Well, I, you know, one of the things that blows me away about this nerve, the more and more I read about it and learn about it is that, you know, it's um, just the potential of the types of things that we can use it for. Um, and that's just very, very exciting. And so I am so excited that you're going to be coming out, um, Dr. Vedran, and, you know, sharing your research with us and also, you know, the things that, that you were very excited about and, um, you know, this, um, our community and it's also the wider community that's interested in neuroscience and optimization and just the human psychological state. Um, you know, we're, you're very valuable to all of us. So I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You know, uh, Vegas, the vagus nerve is really something I'm very passionate about. It's almost like um, the skeleton key of the brain, right? Uh, we're really approaching on a time where we can um, rapidly accelerate and enhance uh, neuroplasticity, which historically we haven't been able to accomplish. It seems to occur with VNS. And if you can harness that power, you can really treat a variety of neuropsychiatric disorders and improve human wellness, performance, behavior, and ultimately have this really powerful tool that's available commercially at home or in the clinic um, that can help a lot of people without a pharmacological intervention. So that's really our goal, the direction of our research. 
uh, is to help as many people as we can um, and in the process, uh, have a little fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Um, and um, I will see you soon. Thank you. Take care.